Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the really cool enhancements made to the Toshiba G810. Okay, so let's start with a hardware tour of the device. As I said before, it's a flush touch screen, there are no edges, and I want to show you something really interesting after I take out the stylus in the extremely awkward place. I hate, I hate the stylus. It's, it's plasticky, it's crappy, it's really annoying to use. But anyway, you see these buttons I mentioned that they're completely flat, so they're touch-based, right? They actually have the same characteristic as the touch screen. So, you know, if you ever tilt your device to the side and you touch the screen, you can see the kind of, um, the, the colors bend because it's pushing down on the screen. The screen actually has some play. The same thing can be said about these buttons. They use resistive touch screen technology, which means the two layers touch each other underneath the button, and that's how the device knows that it's registered a, a button press. So they require a little bit of pressure to get them activated, but not too much. Here we have a D-pad. It takes a little bit of getting used to, to not, have, not be able to feel for the, the edges of the button. Um, Let's see, we have a home button, which takes you back to the now screen on SPB Mobile Shell. Start menu. Two completely useless uh, soft key buttons. The reason I say that they're useless is because just, you know, three millimeters above that, you can press on the actual screen to get that soft function to work. Here we have start, call start and call end button. And on the bottom, we have a microphone and some branding from Toshiba. On the bottom, it says Qualcomm 3G CDMA. On this side, we have a, a slot for the micro SD card, but why is it exposed? There should be a filler card here. I don't want it dust and such to get uh, trapped in there. To the left of that, we have a soft reset hole, a power button, and I actually like the placement of this power button because I pick up the device with my left hand, I use my thumb to tap on the, tap on the device, and then I whip out the stylus with my right hand. I think it's better than a placement on the top. Here we have a volume up and down button, nothing on the top and this is what it looks like when you take out the stylus and then there's a button here for record for voice notes and camera shutter button and here's the port for mini USB flipping over to the back we have the three megapixel camera with autofocus so that's good self portrait mirror and a fill light Okay, let me show you some things about this device that I didn't show on the second video that talked about software enhancements. To flip from screen to screen, you know, we have these three different screens in SPB Mobile Shell. You can actually swipe your finger. Look at that. And you can change that animation. Uh, I'll show you where to do that in a second. There's a second animation that takes place when you click on an icon. So right now we have the rolling cube icon going, and that will work for other things too. To change these animations, you go into the Settings button, and we go to SBB Mobile Shell Settings for Toshiba. I'm going to click on the Animation tab, and here we can change uh, the More and Back functions and the Main Window function. So I'm going to change them up just to show you what other options we have. Um, for the Main Window, we're going to change uh, Sliding to Sweeping, and for the More and Back, we're going to change it to Folding. So I click OK. takes me back. Now let's see what we have. Okay, now it's a sliding action. And you can also use the soft key buttons down here to toggle through the screens. Though some may prefer just to press the buttons along the bottom. Okay, so then the question is, how do I get to that now screen when I'm doing something else in Windows Mobile, the standard interface? Well, there are two ways. One of them is to press on this home button, and we're back. And press the X. And another way, and I think this is kind of an undiscovered feature of SBB Mobile Shell, if you take your finger and drag from the top of the task, from the top bar down, you get this. This will let you toggle between the three different SBB Mobile Shell windows. So we have the phone <coughs> application here, application launcher, and then the regular now screen. So that could be a, a good way to quickly get to a particular screen of SPB Mobile Shell rather than just pressing the home button and going straight back. So that's another way to do it. Now I want to show you the, the flick scrolling enhancements made to this, which only work in some programs. We get the flick scrolling enhancements from SPB Pocket Plus. So I'm going to go into Internet Explorer, and here we have pocketnow.com mobile loaded. And let me show you how this works. 
it's it's quite precise. I, I know exactly how much the page is going to move down because it feels like an iPhone. It feels like it should. Um, you can go pretty fast. You could stop it very quickly. You have to you have to double click on the screen, and I think this probably works a lot better with a stylus to highlight text. Yes, exactly. And this flick scrolling also works in something like contacts. So we'll go to contacts, and I flick and stop and flick and flick and flick. Much better than the uh, flick scrolling of the HTC Touch Flow found on the HTC Touch and Titan 2 and that sort of thing. And the last enhancement I want to show you is SPB Full Screen Keyboard, which in my opinion is the worst on-screen keyboard ever to land on Windows Mobile. So here I am in Word Mobile and I'm going to click New to open a new document. And here I've got the standard Windows Mobile um, keyboard, on-screen keyboard, and I'm going to click on this button in the corner, which will cause me to rotate the device and reorient my finger so that I can type on this keyboard. This keyboard covers the entire screen so that I can only see one line of text. So um, that is not very convenient. Um, today is... Friday. I've been practicing with this keyboard and even with practice I'm still not that fast. I don't find the touches to be very precise for some reason. It's got really good word completion so I don't have to sp spell a word fully. It kind of knows what I'm trying to say. If I misspell a word it will correct it for me. But still the whole idea of covering everything on the screen to get a keyboard and you know having to turn the device into landscape to type is just silly. I think you're much better off getting a program like TouchPal, which give you uh, gives you options to have a T9-like pad and a shirt-type pad, rather than just the standard Windows Mobile keyboard or this horrendous full-screen keyboard. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you like what you see, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We add videos all the time, and that way you can keep abreast of when we add new ones. I'll be back with the full review soon. Look for that on PocketNow.com.